What's up, everybody? It's Keith Keys, and welcome to another episode of On The Mic. And on today, we have somebody special with us. We have a singer. She's a songwriter, founder of Spiritual Milk. She is a mother. She is a wife. She is a woman who wears many hats. And we are going to sit down and talk to her today. I bring to the microphone none other than my sister, Dania Chanel. How are you doing, Dania? I'm doing well, bro. How are you? Thank you for having me. This is amazing. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> thank you for being on um definitely um this was just the perfect opportune time to mm-hmm. just have some of these discussions and we just want to get into uh more about you about your life about what you're Ooh. doing what you have going on um okay. and then even in the many endeavors that you have planned for the future so first okay. off can you introduce yourself to the people to the to the people who may not know you Who is Dania Chanel? Lord. Okay. Hi, everyone. I am Dania Chanel. I'm an artist. I'm a singer, songwriter, um, author. You know, I try to stay busy as much as possible. I'm also a mommy. I'm in ministry. Um, I do everything that God has allowed me to do, uh, hopefully with grace and dignity. So, yeah, that's who I am. I hate talking about myself, though, but I know this is the platform to do so, <laughs> but right, so, God is amazing. So take us through your journey a little bit. Um, you're, you're an artist, so you sing. Mm-hmm. And so what kind of, so, okay, because growing up, you have people who can sing and everybody and their mama yeah. and their family can sing something or yeah. think they can sing. Um, yeah. But what made you become an artist? Um, there are a lot of people who are artists Mm-hmm. who kind of don't know why they are artists, but we mm-hmm. are intrigued to find out um, what are the things that happened in your life that kind of got you to the point where you're at now that you're like, you know, I just want to actually put my music out there for the world and treat myself as an artist. So what was that yeah. journey? So for For me, I always felt like it was a conversation between me and God ever since I was a little girl. Like, I just always felt like he was speaking to me to do this, do that. It was always music for me. It was always, whether it was me at four running around the house with my microphone, singing songs, whatever. um, I just always felt it was my destiny, my calling. I just didn't know how or when or what um, or how that was going to take place. But I just always knew that it was something, a part of me. It was always my identity, like just always. So I couldn't imagine life without doing music. I couldn't imagine life without writing music. I mean, so it was just always built inside of me to do. And then I started um, for years. I was doing backup singing, um, recording in the studio, helping out other artists. And finally, I'm just like, God has been giving me so much music. It's about time to put my stuff out, trying to, you know, formulate that plan. But just it was time for that. So that's me. (laughs) No, all right, cool. Look, that's 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 actually awesome to hear. A lot yeah. of us we start off um gravitating towards music because it's something that is uh it's like a subconscious uh influence that influences yeah. everybody. So even at a young age, we get to a point uh where it's uncontrollable. We we have to address yes. we have to address music yeah. in some type of way. Uh either even if we're just dancing or Mm -hmm. just trying to hum along to it Uh, but then a lot of us we actually gravitate to actually being the ones to create music um so let me so let me ask you this yeah there are a lot of artists out there Mm -hmm. everybody and their mother now in 2022 is an artist congratulations everybody everybody is (laughs) everybody is an artist let me ask you this um Mm -hmm. You being an artist, you being somebody who has um, worked with a lot of different people, mm-hmm. you've been able to sing background for a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. You've been able to sing in groups with people. You've been yeah. able to uh, solo dolo it yourself and grind it out <laughs> yourself for a very long time as well. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you, what as because there are a lot of singers, yeah. um, what? can you say pertaining to you is the thing that Mm -hmm. you believe God gave you or uh, separates you in a Mm -hmm. sense from everybody else? Because if everybody else does the same exact thing, you know, what is the difference maker in you or when people listen to your music versus listening to somebody else? 
you know what? That's a crazy question because I, I think about that often. Like, what makes me stand out? Um, what makes me set apart from other people? Um, I honestly don't know the answer to that. I know God is God, and He makes people different. And I'm praying that you know you guys connect with my music, you connect with me, my personality. But most importantly, like the music that He gives to me, I I just want to share it to the world. Like, there's times where He even gives me music in in my dreams just being honest. And I wake up and I'm like, okay, God, is this for me? Do you want me to share this? Like, how do you want me to do this? And I literally get up and start writing what he put inside of me in my dreams. And I'm like, okay, there has to be a reason for this. There has to be a purpose for it. Um, so yeah. So, I mean, I just hope, you know, people connect with me and people feel that, you know, I'm a part of your family, even like, I just want to just put it out there and hopefully it blesses someone. All right, school. So let me let, let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. um, God gave you a song, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's say God gave me a song. Yeah. Um, but everybody, everybody mm -hmm. may not express mm -hmm. the God given song. Mm -hmm. Okay. They express the song that they created. Mm. So how do you, um, how do you express the God given song? Because I love that. Um, mm. everybody like, you know, I, I love, I love listening to new music, great music yeah. and I'm a musician. So it doesn't take much to get me going. If, if a good mm. progression and a good bump is going on or something mm. like this, it doesn't take much, yeah. but there's a difference um, between a song that God gave you and a song that sounds good. Mm, yeah. So, okay. so in your own words, how yeah. do, how, how do you express that God given song? Cause sometimes to some people, the God given song is not as polished or, mm. uh, or sexy, you know, see, people, people like the, that's crazy. The three How can words. people feel that way? You, you would think like, okay, if God gave you something, you know, you would try to be as authentic as you can to that. You know what I mean? Like if you stray far from that, then that's not the blueprint that he put inside of you. That's not the blueprint that he wanted. So if you're going for just sound and beat or whatever, like then, okay, you do you, but it's not going to be approved by God. Like, it's not going to be like that stamp of like, this is what I gave you to share. And for me, I try to be as authentic to that sound as possible. Like even, um, even when I'm, you know, recreating it from my dream, I'm like, okay, that's not right. That's not what I heard. And then I won't, I won't add that as simple as that, you know, like I try to be as, you know, creative, but at the same time, I want it to be exactly how God gave me. If that makes sense, yeah, you know, yeah. cause like why change the recipe when the recipe is working, when the recipe is good, like so, what's the point? So, so then let me ask you this question. Um, mm -hmm. what is your definition of ministry mm. what is that love it what is that so i always when i was in a group with chosen chosen elect shout out to chosen um we always had the tagline industry ministry not industry and that for me always stuck because you would go around you would see all types of people and I, I met people who claimed they were i'm not gonna say they claimed I met people who they said they were Christian artists, but when you meet them in person, like, where is the fruit? You know, where is that, that thing that sets you apart from the industry? If you're acting like the industry, if you're out here doing whatever you want, but then in, in, in the crowd, you're trying to be holy. It doesn't make sense. Um, so for me, ministry means edifying people. Ministry means, you know, providing resources for, for, to help pull people out of their depression, sadness, fear, you know, um, ministry is, is the fruit, you know, um, it just, it makes me think of Jesus in the fig tree. And I want to be, I want my ministry to have that fruit. I don't want it to look like, you know, a tree that, that, that doesn't bear, bear fruit. So that's, that's truly important to me. That's everything that I try to work for. Um, to make sure that everything I do, God is in it. So, so how do you, how do you bridge that gap or put together the creativity of being 
an artist and God's giving you melodies. He's giving mm -hmm. you um, notes. He's giving you words. He's giving you ideas. Um, what is the gap or how do you put together like the creative aspect of having the things that God gave you and then still mm -hmm. trying to be effective while ministering or still trying to minister? Because it seems as if some people um, aren't able to do both simultaneously. Mm. It seems as if one thing has to suffer over wow. the other. So it's almost as if, um, if it's the word that has to go forth, then the song isn't the greatest. Or mm. if the song got to be so dope, then obviously we can't use that scripture. You know, so yeah, it's like, really? how do you, how, in, uh, from your perspective, how how do you uh, put the two together? The, the, the thing that God gave you in, mm -hmm. in the creativity as a gift, but then also... Uh, merge that with trying to be as effective as you can while ministering. So how do you do both? So here's the thing. It's not me. <laughs> it wouldn't be me. Because if I thought it was me, that's where I would start with the problem. Um, it would be God. It would be the Holy Spirit leading and directing and guiding. Um, I often pray before I do anything mm -hmm. um, to try to seek, you know, what is needed. Um, I try to discern, you know, the atmosphere, everything like that. There's been times, it's so crazy. Um, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but um, there was a time where I did, I did a conference and um, we were all set to do the song, the way everything, the way it was supposed to, the, the band was set, everything. And God threw a monkey wrench and was like, sing this song. And I'm like, Lord, they're not ready. The band's not prepared. The leader even just told me to stick with the, with the script, basically, <laughs> like, am I being obedient or am I being disobedient? Like, and so I, ha I had to, I had to go with the Holy spirit over everything. And, um, and I had to just do what I felt, um, God wanted me to do. And some people weren't happy and I understand, but I just, for me, I'm just the type of person who listens to, to the Holy spirit before I do anything else. Like I can't, I can't, like, it's just too important for me. I cannot go left or right unless he tells me to, you know, and somebody needed to hear that song. Somebody needed to be ministered to at that moment, more than us sticking to the script, more than us sticking to protocol, not saying church protocol. I don't want to open that door, mm -hmm. but no, but just more so than just, you know, sticking to what we rehearsed. And that was the most important thing at that moment. So, I had to be a rebel. Unfortunately. So, so, so let me ask you this. Let's say I'm, I'm, I'm an artist. Yeah. I'm an artist and I want to be more impactful with mm -hmm. the music that God gave me. I mm -hmm. want to reach more people. I want to be more effective. Yeah. How, and, and if I'm struggling to hear, Mm. from God or if I'm struggling to obtain that creativity that he so gave me what what are the things that I need to do mm. in order that I get to that place to where my music is impactful because believe it or not mm. um every musician every artist at the end of the day they mm. want their music to be impactful for whoever is listening to their music mm -hmm. and a lot of times um it may not be the things that we think that it actually is yeah, as yeah. is being the problem to why we're mm -hmm. not impactful. So how do I hear from God? How do I yeah. get to, how do you get to that place of, all right, God, this is you. And it's not yeah. all the sugar intake I had this morning, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or it's Absolutely. not the coffee. So how do you get to that point to where you're like, you know what, God, this is you. I'm yeah. going to do this. How do you get there? So you have to pull yourself away. You have to take that time. You have to, to be in prayer. You have to be in that time space with him that you can hear his voice over distractions, over your own will, over your children yelling in the background, whatever the case, like you have to take that private time um, with God and, and get into your secret place, I guess you want to call it, um, just to allow yourself to be vulnerable in front of him. Um, allow yourself to, to get into that position that you can hear from him so that you can receive what he has to say. And then you can move forward. That's the only way to do it. You can't be out here like, you know, with all the loudness, me and Ben, we always say, you know, block out the black, the, the background noise um, so that we can hear each other when we're talking. You know what I mean? Like 
all of that other noise is, is, it doesn't matter. Now we're having a conversation. Now we can hear each other clearly. That's what we got to do with God. So that's, that's the only way to go. I mean, you can't just be out here all willy nilly <laughs> and thinking you're listening to God when you never had a conversation with him. Like, how is that possible? So, yeah. Good, good answer. Good answer. So <laughs> let's, I want to switch gears for a second. Okay. So, um, you have some songs available that everybody yeah, can go yeah, listen to. Yeah, some songs available. What, what, what are some of the new things that you're working on or that you're planning to do, you're planning mm-hmm. on putting out? What are some yeah. things that we can expect in the future? So we finally have an EP coming out soon. Praise God, because this has been a long time coming. So um, we have a single coming out with that as well called Recovery. And then um, we're going to be also working on our Spiritual Milk, which is a YouTube channel that I have. It's under Dania Chanel on YouTube, but I'm actually going to start releasing some episodes of Spiritual Milk where it's literally like we're getting into the world, but it's in a fun, like reality TV sort of way. Um, Very interesting, very entertaining. We also have a podcast coming out called the Spiritual Milk Podcast, um, where we'll be getting into like the depths of the topics that we talk about on the episodes of Spiritual Milk. So we have a lot of things coming out that are really exciting. I'm really excited to finally be able to focus on 100%. So, yeah. (laughs) That's what's up. That sounds... I can't wait for that. Me personally, yeah, I can't you. wait for all the music to come out. Um, yes. So let me so so let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm scared. What is <laughs> so in 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 collaborate in collaborating mm-hmm. with others or working mm-hmm. with others? Yeah. Um, one of the main people that you work with, obviously, is the the great. The great uh, Benjamin Bullock himself, <laughs> um, uh, working with uh, working with different people, collaborating with different people. Mm-hmm. Uh, how hard is it for you to collaborate with others? Mm-hmm. And also, uh, who, if you had a choice, who you wanted to ever do a song with, who would that be? Wow. Okay. Okay. That's a loaded question. Um, so let me try to answer your first one. What, what works well? Um, who, who, yeah, let me go back. So I love working with my husband. Um, he knows me, he knows my sound. He knows like everything that I like, even before I say it, he's already adding it to the track. So I love that. What works well with us is how we communicate. Um, because he knows me, um, I'm comfortable Um, That's very important. You always want to be comfortable with your producer. Um, I'm not afraid to make a mistake around him, but he is honest. He will tell me the truth. He will tell me to correct it in love. Um, But yeah, I love that relationship that we have when we work together with our music because I I feel as though we were brought together for that purpose. Um, One of the beautiful blessings of marrying your producer (laughs) is that... (laughs) Is that you have him 24 <laughs> 7. All right, ladies, and, the fact um, your music is whack is because you ain't marry your producer. <laughs> marry your producer. No. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it works for us. So, I, I'm thank, I thank God for that. Um, but yeah, like it, it works out. It's a beautiful, you know, collection. Uh, con- just honestly, like a conversation when we're building the music um you hear him in in every aspect of the music and then i'm able to to kind of dance with that so it's a pretty cool thing um also what was your other question you said who I, who would i love to work with yeah oh there's so many people so <laughs> um my biggest all-time greatest person ever in the world and i've met her once and i was like completely in awe cc winans cc winans yes really? Yes. When I met her, let me tell you, I was bawling out of control. I just couldn't believe it. Um, And she's probably like, what are you doing? But yeah, no, I would love to work with anybody. Honestly, Um, Todd Delaney, Todd Galberth, um, Tasha Cobbs. Oh, gosh. I I mean, the list goes on. I have so many people that I would love to work with. Maverick City, like they're dope. I would love to just do anything Um, Naomi Rain, Salmis Rain, all of these dope individuals. uh, They have amazing music. So I would love to work with them. 
That's so crazy. <laughs> I would have <laughs> never guessed. I would have never guessed EC Winans. That was like my mom's. Oh, really? That was like my mom's favorite artist ever. Oh, my <laughs> Or one of them. Winans is everything. Like, I, when I grew up, so I used to do like a lot of like, um, competitions when I was younger because I used to be in like a CCM type church um they would always refer to me as little CC I don't know why but um the judges would always say little CC and I, I still have it to this day I have it written on one of my papers of what the judges um said so yeah she's always been my favorite her and Yolanda Adams was always number one for me so yeah <laughs> <laughs> So let me ask you this. Um, in the music creation process, uh, working with different people, uh, working on different songs, there's there's so many different variables that come into play yeah. when it comes to making anything. Mm -hmm. What is one pet peeve that you have that you have now with all the experience that you have? Mm -hmm. uh, what's one pet peeve that you have that you like, you know, every time this happens, I, I swear to God, I swear to God. What's that I one pet know. peeve that you have? Um, Like from other artists or just me in general? Like you. Okay. What's one pet peeve? So I'm about to say, you're about to get me in trouble. Uh, <laughs> one pet peeve for me. I get, you know what, when I'm, when I hear it in my head and I'm not singing it, you know what I mean? Like that for me, like, I'm like, come on, Dania, you can get, like, I don't know. I Getting in my head, that's, I think that's it. That's the pet peeve. Allowing the enemy to get in my head and stop what it is that we're trying to do to move forward. That That is annoying at this point. I'm like, devil, get thee behind me. Like, it's so annoying. Like, even today, I could tell you stories, but, you know, it's just, the enemy is always busy, but God is still greater, so... But yeah, that's one thing. Just getting in my head. Like, I think I think too much. I think that's what it is. Like, when I'm in the studio, I'm like, oh, no, that's not good. Like, let's do that again. And like, my producer husband will be like, no, that's great. Like, keep it. And I'm like, no. So, you know, just me warring with myself, going back and forth, just getting in my head. That's really it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think way too much. And I think that's my that's my biggest issue is me. So let me let me ask you this. Uh people a lot of people know you for different things. Um, mm -hmm. you know, one one way or another. People know you for different things. What's the one thing you will want to be remembered or you will mm. want for people to know you as? What's that one one thing? That you will want people like you know when it's all said and done, yeah. And you hang the jersey up. It's like yo, I know Dania is. What is that? That I listened to God and that I showed you how to do it, and therefore you were able to thrive, not just survive, but thrive. And that's why, like, I want to prove that in my own lifestyle. Like mm -hmm. he, people of this world, they're looking for demonstration of God. You know, sometimes they're not going to read the Bible. Sometimes they're not going to um, be in church. But if we're calling ourselves a Christian, you know, we need to be that salt of the earth. And I want to show them that walk. And, and not just that walk, but show them what God can do in 2022 and beyond. That That's my only thing, demonstration of the power of Christ inside me. So that's it. Wow, that's good. No, that was that was a good answer. That was a little wow. that mm -hmm. that was a good answer. So let me ask you this: If people were looking for you, mm -hmm. where do they go to find you? How yeah. do they get in contact with you? Mm -hmm. And 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 what should they say when they get there? <laughs> <laughs> um. So I have a website. It's deniachanel.com. It's D E N I A. S H A N E L L E dot com. I'm also on Facebook under Dania Chanel. I um, also have an Instagram page, Dania Chanel, as well. Um, but yeah, I'll just get in contact with me, like DM me, whatever. Like I'm, I'm available. So just whatever you want, just get in contact with me. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not unreachable. Like it's, it's yeah. I'm on social media, so yeah, that works. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, Dania, I appreciate, first of all, you jumping on here. Um, I appreciate you spending time with us and with everybody else. Before we wrap up, can you leave the people with one word of wisdom, one thing that's just on your heart and on your mind, uh, or something that's just been bugging you lately that you just need to let everybody know? What's the one word of wisdom that you would like to leave with everybody? I would just say, trust God. I know things may look crazy right now, especially with everything that we're dealing with in the world. I mean, for me, people have been, it's really been affecting me to hear someone has been committing suicide. Um, Mm -hmm. That like breaks my heart. Like there's so many other options other than that. Um, So that's honestly what my song is about, recovery. Um, Just God pulling you away from that. And I just want to encourage somebody, like, whatever you're going through, that is not the solution. Please don't choose that. I mean, there's so much more life to live beyond this moment, beyond whatever issue you're dealing with, um, beyond the problem. But just trusting God every step of the way and, and being hopeful of your future, because there is a future. You have a future. And it's, and it's pretty awesome compared to, you know, everything that we see right now. And that's the, that's the fake stuff. So I don't want people to focus on the fake stuff or what you see right now because it's temporary. So just be encouraged. Wow. Well, thank you once again, you, uh, for everybody who's trying to get in contact with the knee, I will make sure in the description, all of the links will be there so you can reach out to her before you leave, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification yes. bell. So you don't miss another video like this one. And I will <laughs> see you in the next video. Peace.